Hello there, my name is Ismas and welcome to another Million Point Eight tutorial series. And uh, this time we're doing a tutorial request by uh, Yileng Yang. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Uh, he's one of my patrons. Uh, thank you for the support and uh, everything. Uh, so you can also become a patron and uh, ask for tutorials uh, like this. So yeah, th this is what we are going to be making. Uh, I've already loaded it up here. So this is a uh, uh, Himong ethnic minority pure silver necklace and uh, you can see he was nice enough to send us uh, uh, the reference images are uh, very high detail so we can uh, easily look at the details here um, yes yeah, so you can see we have some uh, detailed screenshots here uh, of uh, what we are going to be making and uh, yes yeah, so let's dive in and uh, get started on how to make this so I've already opened up Blender and uh, let me just delete the default cube and I'll drag and drop uh, the images uh, that I'll be using. Let me first change uh, this here into an image editor and uh, I'll also switch on my screen keys just so you can see the shortcuts that I'm using. Uh, so I'll just drag uh, these images there expand this a bit and uh, maybe I can just subdivide this and uh, drop uh, the other other second image as well yeah so this is what we have uh, I guess I should also drop one here uh, in my screen area so I think this is uh, the one I should I think this this is not exactly this, but uh, as you can see, when you zoom in a lot, uh, you, s you start seeing pixelated details. Uh, so I also downloaded some images that uh, look similar to this, uh, so that I can have um, multiple images where I can look at uh, different details. But uh, let me drag in uh, this image here. Let me see this. No, not that. Uh, let me see. Let me see. let me first drag this here because we want to do uh, the small details and then uh, start working on the large details. Yeah, so uh, I think we can start with. Uh, let me see. Let me see. We can start with this. Let's start with this here. So something simple, and then we can expand later on that. So let's start with this ring here. Um, and the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to, uh, you want to be very careful when you're modeling something like this, uh, if you're going to model everything, because you can see there are a lot of details, there are a lot of tiny things here, and uh, if you use a lot of polygons, uh, it may come to, and uh, your computer is not strong enough, uh, you may end up uh, with a very laggy computer where you can't do anything, uh, because you can see there are a lot of tiny details here, so we want to be very careful with the amount of detail we add into our objects. So let's start with this. I uh, will start with a circle. So let me move it just a little bit up. This is rotation above our reference image. You can see we're using uh, 30, 32 vertices. Uh, those are a lot of vertices. Uh, for this here. Uh, so let me change it to about six, maybe eight should be good enough. Uh, I think let me use about 10 uh, because I don't want to use the subdivision surface on these uh, elements, on these uh, things here because it will be too much and my computer won't be able to handle it. So uh, 10 vertices is enough. Uh, if I add small shading to it, uh, it should be uh, good. So I can s scale this down, then go to edit mode, extrude down a bit like that, and then smush, turn on smooth shading uh, for that. Uh, then I think I should add, let me see, then I can add uh, the solidify modifier, something like that. And uh, let me, should I use the solidify modifier here? Let's see, let's see, let's just first remove this. Uh, if we select this edge loop on this, hit E, and then scale it to the Z axis. I'm 
I'm scaling it, constraining the z-axis by hitting S and then shift Z to constrain uh, the z-axis uh, so that we only scale this in the x and y plane. Uh, then I can bridge this to by right clicking and bridge uh, polygons to have that. And uh, I think we can go to the object data here under normals, turn on auto smooth and limit uh, the angle of smooth. Hey, let's try 60 and because we don't want it to be super sharp here, super smooth around the edges here. And how you can see there is this kind of portion, uh, concave uh, or convex, I don't know what's called. Uh, but uh, let's add a loop there and add a loop there and uh, scale, select this loop. You can see the shortcut I'm using here and uh, select this loop as well. Then scale them in the X and Y plane by constraining the Z axis. So S shift Z, something like that. Now we can use the bevel tool, control B to kind of add in that convex shape. And I use your middle mouse to add more resolution. Let's limit it to around uh, that. And I think that's good enough. So then we need to work on this side here. So I'll just select this. Hmm. Okay, so this ring is not exactly like that. I think I need to rotate this by 90 degrees. Uh, let me also center the pivot point, cursor to select it, and then right click, uh, origin 3D cursor. So I think this is this here. Uh, this is just a ring. Uh, it's not cylindrical like this. So let's do that as well. I'll just do it in edit mode of this. So I'll just select uh, this middle loop, shift D, uh, rotate it in the Y direction, 90 degrees, and I can then hit E to extrude it, scale it, uh, scale the extrusion, Control L to select the element, and then do something like that. i uh, make sure you give it auto smooth, some smoothness, add more shading to it, uh, to have something like that. Then we can select this and uh, bring it in here. I think because uh, these edges are at, uh, at 90, de 90 degree angles, you see we have some uh, sharp uh, shading there. So you can select these loops, Control B, and uh, bevel them a bit like that, so that we get that smooth uh, shading. Uh, we don't want a lot of what says, so I'll select this edge loop and then hit Control X to dissolve it, uh, something like that. Uh, this angle here is too sharp for the shading, so I'll select that and scale it in until you can see that uh, we get a better smooth angle. Uh, maybe this here, can just slide it in. And uh, this as well. Uh, we don't need this edge loop. Uh, so we can scale this up, slide this in until we get a better smooth thing, smooth angle. that so I think we need a, a more larger ring so I can select this control L and use out S to make it more broad I think something like that uh, let me see can I want I don't want this to be too sharp let's try 45 let's try 70 maybe 80 yes yeah, so we have a more smooth edge there and I think the sharpness here is good enough so we have something like that so before we duplicate this or use the array uh, let's first see if we unwrap this so that uh, uh, when we when it comes to texturing it uh, will make it it's easier uh, so I'll select this ring and I'll select this ring Ctrl E maxing and I if you edit, select everything, unwrap. And I think we can also select this ring here, Control E, maxing, and unwrap again. Yeah, so we have something like that. And let's see what else can we do here. Let me save this. I'll call this, uh, I'm not sure what the name was. Hmm. 
just copy this and use that as our name for the project. Uh, so I, I usually like to see uh, the final results, how the final, how the final shading would look uh, before I continue with everything. So let's do that, uh, create a shader that will give us uh, this look here and see how uh, that goes. So go to the shading tab and uh, create a new material. I'll call this gold um, brush, brushed uh, metal. I, I'll add a new texture image and uh, I have some textures here. And uh, if you want to download the textures I, I use here, all the material I use here, you can go to um, blender101.com. I'll be uploading the, the images, sorry, the, the shaders or materials that I use here. So I'll select this uh, anisotropic texture. Or you can just Google the textures, the different textures that uh, resemble what I'm using here. So open that. And if I preview this, Control Shift, click the node. If you, uh, this only works if you're using the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. Uh, so let's also add the texture coordinate mapping, Control T. I can see how uh, this looks. Not very nice. We want it to flow in the same direction as this. So we need to, uh, let's go to UV Edit, uh, turn on texture coordinate. I think this is because uh, of because the way we unwrapped uh, this object uh, is uh, the UVs are circular, so they are not following the direction of uh, these fiber texture. So what we can do, we can add a seam here, and uh, there's a new feature in Blender 2.8 where if you right click, so if you hit U uh, for the UV unwrapping options, you have the live UV unwrap. So we can turn that on and uh, select uh, maybe this loop here. Control E max seam, and you can see we, we get a live UV unwrap. Uh, I want this UV to follow the direction of these, uh, these fibers. Uh, we can also do the same here. And you can see I'm hiding my seams uh, behind uh, the different objects so that uh, if we have any seams visible, uh, they'll be hidden away from the camera. So let me also mark a seam here. And you can see how this is UV unwrapped. Uh, we need to rotate these 90 degrees. So I think I can also, if I, if you turn on this uh, UV sync, I can see uh, the different uh, selections uh, you have in the UV port. And I think I can uh, clear this seam so that this island, these two islands are connected into one single uh, UV island. So I'll just select this edge loop here. I'm using Alt uh, left mouse click, then Control E clear seam. And you can see now it's, uh, it has turned into one single UV island. So I can rotate the, this UV iron, uh, the entire UV, UV map, and then uh, 90 degrees so that it follows uh, the direction of our fibers. Uh, so we can go into, we can connect this, uh, let's see, let's see. We can connect this into the roughness node. Uh, so let's preview this for a second. You can see how uh, the shading is, we're getting something similar to this. So we just need to play around with the colors a bit. We also need to make this metallic so that we get uh, that metal effect. And uh, uh, we can also increase the anisotropic shader. I don't know why this doesn't really do any effect, but uh, it's supposed to give you that brushed metal look. Uh, but so let's see, it doesn't really do much. So, and uh, I think we can use this as a bump map as well. So we can go under uh, and add a bump node, connect this to the height uh, input, and then connect this to the normal input, and uh, reduce uh, the strength a bit, something like that. Uh, I also think this is a bit too shiny. Uh, so what we can do is, uh, add a convert math node in between the roughness and uh, so that we can control the amount of roughness you can see this is a bit too rough so we can play around with this a bit around something like that and you can see it's too saturated uh, from this uh, so what i usually like to do is uh, also use 
uh, the values from this are to give uh, the color uh, the color map. So I usually add a color mix RGB. I use the input from this uh, node as the factor. Now, if we preview this node only and see, we don't see anything right now because uh, color one and color two are similar. So you can select color one to be uh, the default, the original color, and uh, play around uh, with another color here. Uh, so if we fit this in here, it adds in a little bit of detail in our texture. I guess we can. We should also reduce the strength a bit here. And uh, let's also play around with the saturation a bit. So I think this is good enough. Uh, so let me scale this, save this as backup copy as well. And uh, if we add on the ambient occlusion, you can see how uh, that will be affecting our shading. But uh, if you have ambient occlusion, if I have ambient occlusion turned on right now uh, when I'm recording, and uh, it will slow down my computer if I have a lot of uh, objects in, in my scene. So I'll turn it off for now. So, But uh, this is what we have so far. You can see how uh, that looks. Okay, so now we can use the array system to kind of duplicate this until we get to here. So I can add uh, the array. Uh, so let me first apply rotation and scale uh, so that uh, these axes are the same for the object. I will see, we'll continue this in the next tutorial. Thank you.